Hey, this is Daniel. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm going to share with you how I edited a recent photo from a really fun engagement photo shoot. And in this video, you're going to learn how to replace skies, how to cut around objects with masking, how to duplicate objects, and how to enhance the color of your portraits. Well, let's get to it. Okay, so here's a Photoshop file of the finished image. Now, before we get into the fun stuff in Photoshop, let's cover a few of the technical details of how I made the photo. I did shoot this outside in, with natural light, so no off-camera flash. I used my Canon R6, my 20 millimeter 2.8 lens. The settings were f5.6, 125th of a second, and my ISO was at 250. So nothing really special there. I had plenty of light, so I didn't need to shoot wide open. And I wanted this to be a wide angle landscape photo. So my 20 millimeter lens was perfect for that. So here's the Photoshop file. If you look over here on the right, you've got all my layers. It looks like a lot at first, but really it's not a whole lot when you break it down. So what these top layers are, are the duplicated balloons. I'm actually hiding each of them. And here we are to the normal group of balloons. I'll show you how to duplicate those in this video, don't worry. Up here, we've got a color balance to kind of warm up the couple, which they're on a separate layer here, and also a curves layer to add some more contrast and pop to just them, which is this layer right here. Now, how did I cut out the background? Well, I used what's called masking. So this is the mask for that layer. The white means it's visible. Everything that's black is uh, basically erased or temporarily erased out of this layer, which is the couple layer. They're on their own top layer. But what's below them uh, is what's going to enhance the background. We have a curves to add some darkness to the background. We've got another color balance to add some blues, whereas they are warm, so there's some color contrast there. Um, and this folder, this is the uh, new sky replacement feature that Photoshop added recently, and I'm really loving it. It saves me a lot of time. It's got some really good tools, and if you know how to modify masks, you can make it look even better. So it auto-generates this folder with uh, a brightness, a temperature, the sky image, and some uh, like a, a lighting layer, which is interesting. Um, so this is all made by Photoshop. We'll, we'll do that as well in this video. And lastly, here is the retouched layer right here on top. And if I hide this, you'll see the original on the very bottom. You may think, I don't see anything. Well, then you need to take a glance over here in this section of the photo. I actually erased our cars. There's my van and that's their truck. <laughs> Uh, oops, you know, always be aware of what's in the far background because, uh, yeah, it just, I didn't realize that was in the shot until editing time and I had some fun erasing that. So we'll cover that as well. All right, so let's get started. I have the raw image opened up right here. Now I did edit this in Lightroom and if I double click on the thumbnail here, it's gonna bring up camera raw, which is opening the DNG, which Lightroom edited. So we see all the settings here still intact. These are all the sliders and edits that I did in Lightroom. I really just wanted it to be a good, even, level, and balanced photo. If nothing else, a little on the warm side, but that's just my personal taste. In Photoshop, and it has all my settings still there intact. So let's start with the sky replacement, and then we'll do the balloons, and then we'll do the finer stuff like color balance things, like tweaking the colors and erasing the cars in the background. So to replace the sky, it's super easy. Uh, first of all, you do need to have this updated to the latest version of Photoshop. And I think you may even want to restart your computer because for a longest time, I did not have this feature, which is an edit sky replacement right here. I didn't have this, even though my Photoshop was up to date. It was very frustrating, but I think after a computer reset, it popped up. So that was annoying, but here it is, sky replacement. You can, of course, pick from any of these skies that are included in Photoshop, but I'm going to use uh, an image that I already have. So I'm gonna click on the down photo, click on the gear and new sky. I actually have a, a folder just for stock photos. These are all royalty free that I've gotten from a number of websites. I'll share those with you guys down below. But uh, I go to skies and I've got a whole bunch of different sky photos here. Let me zoom in a little bit. All right, I found a sky that I like. I actually took this picture, so this is not from online. Um, so I just clicked open. I'm gonna name it church sky because I took this at uh, outside of a church from a different photo shoot. And there we go, it's put in. Now there's lots of tweaking we need to do to get this uh, looking more clean and more realistic. This is, of course, was a clear sky, so that means lots of light is coming down on them, which means you don't wanna use an overcast sky. It's not gonna line up. And the horizon is very bright. You can see the sun is like all over these trees. So try to find a sky that matches somewhat to the real environment that you have. So uh, one thing that's wrong is the placement of the sky. 
which we'll fix later because in the sky image we're using, the horizon is very low. Whereas on this image, the sky is a little bit below the halfway point. You need the horizons to line up on both photos. That's a huge tip for compositing too. When you put in a, ba a background, you need the horizons to be in the same place. Okay, so let's see what these settings are. Shift edge is basically the mask that is uh, cutting away the white sky of my original image and making a, a hole for the sky to show through. So if I do shift edge to the negative, it's basically showing my original sky. It's shifting away from where the edge should be, which is roughly around zero. If we do positive, now it's cutting into and erasing more of my image. See how it cuts in around these branches, making them real skinny and almost invisible. So you want to find a good meaning where you're not losing too much your image, but uh, you know you do want to we get close to your real edges of your of your original picture so that the the other sky image can show through. Fade edge is basically I guess the feather around the edge that is shifting whether it's negative, neutral, or positive. So the fade, if you have no fade, it's a very harsh cut. That might maybe may give you some ugly pixels. A higher fade number is gonna make it smoother and more subtle. So I'm gonna leave this in the middle. This is nice, you can make your sky brighter because this was a bright day. So I may wanna add some brightness. That doesn't look right down here. So I'm gonna leave it up high. Maybe not that high, maybe around 30. Uh, maybe 20. <laughs> uh, and our color temperature, of course, is how cool or warm your sky is. I'm gonna add a little bit of warmness because if it's cool, it's not gonna line up with what the real image is, which is a pretty warm image. And scale, this is nice. You can kind of zoom in or out from your original sky image. Unfortunately, there's no up or down, which is kind of weird. We can do that later. Uh, but I'm gonna scale it to just where the image fits. There we go, that's good. Now there's a light stand here that will erase. That's super easy. Um, foreground adjustments. This is where your lighting layer comes in, which is pretty cool. It can actually simulate, I guess, the sky lighting coming around your object. And there's color adjustment, not really sure what that does yet. Um, but uh, we are going to make sure that the output goes to new layers. So I'm gonna click OK, and here we go. Here is our folder with our sky brightness, which is that we made it brighter, our sky temperature, which we made it a little bit warmer, the actual sky image, if you alt click on the eyeball, you see just the layer. It's kind of a solo mode, there we go. And then our brightness, foreground, layer, which, which honestly I can do without that. I'm gonna delete this. Don't really care for what that's doing. I like it brighter. Um, this is after all themed after an animated movie. So I think it's okay if we break a little bit of realism and a foreground color, which is kind of cooling off a foreground. I don't like that either. I'm gonna delete that. Yes, delete the foreground color adjustment. There we go. Okay, now let's alt click on the actual mask itself. And that will give us a preview of what the mask really is. And you can tell it's not pure white. It should be pure white, but it's kind of fading because of the faded edge and the shifting and things like that. So we're going to, uh, with the layer uh, mask selected, press Control L or Command L on Mac, and we're just gonna brighten it up with levels. So drag the, the high, the bright point down a little bit, and that's going to make a lot more pure white, maybe even the midpoint to get rid of some of that faded edge, not all of it. And we do want the couple to be pure black because remember, they are foreground. The white is basically making a hole for the background to show through. So let's uh, use our brush tool I'm going to use my Ouyan stylus, which I love, and I'm going to grab a brush. I'm going to make it uh, the Photoshop brush. I'm going to make it mostly hard, but not all the way hard, and the brush size around, around that big. If you press the letter D, it makes your uh, foreground and background sw switch to white and black, and then the X key will flip-flop foreground and background colors, which is really handy when you're masking. So I'm just going to be painting black onto this layer mask. I'm doing my best to not cut off any of her hair details or go outside of her body. This is where coloring in the lines comes in handy from, you know, kindergarten. There we go. Now this is pretty tedious, I know. It's not, it's especially difficult if you're using a mouse. Um, I found a trackpad to be easier to use than a mouse, honestly, but that's because I've used a laptop for many years. And um, I, I, though when I do work like this, I always use my uh, pen and tablet, which I'll also put a link for the one that I use in the, in the description down below because I love this and it, it only costs me about 70 bucks, which is really, really good compared to what Wacom charges for their stuff. I'm just gonna speed this video up real quick so I can get this part done. Okay, we're done with that. I painted underneath the, the skyline to make sure that was solid black, but don't paint solid black over here because if there are any holes, you wanna keep that in the mask, which there are, there's some faint spots there, which is good. So don't cover, paint over that because that'll be a lot of work to fix. So uh, we do need to erase this uh, random um, light because this was a, in a parking lot. I took this photo. 
I'm going to disable my layer mask so I can see the whole image. And now I can use my spot healing brush, which is J, and just gonna paint over this light pole. There we go. I love this tool because it is just magical. Great, I think this one's popping through a little bit. And that is good enough. So our horizon is right at the bottom of this picture. Like I, I think I pretty much lined up the bottom of my camera, camera frame with the horizon. And that is pretty darn close to the horizon here, although maybe a little bit higher. Okay, next let's cut them out and put them on their own layer and then we'll start duplicating these balloons. So to grab just them and put them on their own top foreground layer, really easy, make sure to select the image or layer with them in it. Go up to select and subject. This is an awesome time-saving feature in Photoshop that's about 80% good <laughs> as far as accuracy. You can see it sometimes misses a hole there. Sometimes it misses their foot because it thinks she's a piece of stone. But hey, that's a lot of time still saved, so I'm not really going to complain that much. I'm going to hit W, which is the quick selection tool. And I'm going to basically add back in these areas that it missed. And if it grabs too much, you can hold Alt and Erase. And it's still kind of fighting me going back and forth. I'm gonna check out the rest of their body and see what other areas. Oh yeah, the hole, let's hold Alt and click in the middle. Nice, I thought we got a perfect selection right there, very nice. Over here, it didn't quite get these strings, but we will add those back in with some manual brushing, which it will actually be really easy because they're just straight lines, so don't worry. That's actually not as tedious as you think it is. Getting Fixing this part down here is probably more tedious. So we're going to pretend that we're good with that. I'm gonna click Select and Mask up top here. And I'm going to turn up my radius and turn on smart radius. It gets a better edging for the mask. And I'm going to shift the radius in a little bit by like 28%, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna click okay. And that's just giving us a more accurate selection. I'm going to duplicate the bottom layer by right clicking and going duplicate layer. I'm just gonna name it a uh, couple. You could also name it subject or model or whatever the person's name. And with the selection still there, we can click on the make mask button down here, which turns your selection into a mask and voila, there it is. Now, nothing looks different because, well, they're not on top. So I'm gonna grab this layer of couple and drag it on the very top above the sky replacement folder. Right there we go. And now we got this funny thing. Don't worry, we can fix that easily. So if we hide the background, look, we have just them. And it's not perfect, it's pretty good. I'm gonna show you a quick trick here to help masking be uh, easier. Click on the bottom layer, create an adjustment layer of hue and saturation, turn on colorize, turn up your saturation and just pick some color that's not in the photo. And now we see this pink part of her shoe is not in the mask of the top layer, couple. That's good, that's what we need to know. So using our brush, I'm gonna make it a small brush size, make sure it's white and make sure you have the mask selected so that you're painting on the mask and not on anything else. And now with this, this color trick I use, it just helps me visualize what is or is not in the mask. So I'm going to basically be painting back in these areas of her shoe. There we go. I'm gonna speed this part up as well to save us some time. Okay, so I just went around their bodies and did a few little touch-ups. Again, very minor details. Most people probably won't even notice that, but uh, you know, I know it's there. And I, if they print it large, or if I, or rather if I print it large for them, it might be visible. So we got this funny little chunk of white, which doesn't belong there. I'm going to paint it out, uh, click on the layer to go to normal viewing mode, and then click on the mask so that when we paint, it will be painting on the mask only. So I'm using black to uh, paint it away. And now here's a, a great trick to save you a lot of time. If, you do, if you're using the brush tool, click one time, which does a little dot right, like right there, hold shift and then click on another area. And look at that, it connects the two between point A and point B, makes a perfect line with your brush tool. And as we all know, making a perfect line with your brush tool, is pretty much impossible. I don't care how good you are with your stylus, it's just not worth it. So I'll use your shift tool. I use this to draw lightsaber blades. I use this for masking. Um, all kinds of stuff. And the mask in here is pretty bad, so we're just going to erase the whole thing of the strings here, and we're gonna draw it back in manually. So I'm just gonna use black over the whole thing, the whole st string area, not the balloons. We're gonna fix the string, which is honestly the, the most tedious and like annoying part of this photo work. But once you get the strings right, which you gotta get them right in the beginning of, with working with these balloons, but once you get it right, it will be awesome later because you can just Copy and paste as many stinking balloons as you want. 
and I'll show you a really clever trick to make it look like uh, there's no pattern. It's not obvious that these balloons are copied and pasted because the colors will be shifting with each with each new copy, which is the, the secret. Um, and it's not it, unless you really focus on the shape of the balloons, it's hard to see the pattern because they're all different colors. Uh, and that will allow us to just copy and paste as much as you want. So I'm actually going to go around the balloons right now and touch up the mask around their edges because, again, this is like one of those things where you got to work a little hard up front to have a lot of fun later. Um, I'm going to paint this out and then use the white color. Remember, white is, for, uh, white is visible, black is invisible. There we go. So white for where we want the foreground to be. And you could probably even pull this off with a photo where no one's even holding any balloons. Just look for a good free stock photo of a bunch of balloons up in the air, kind of at the right, you know, the correct angle, the correct perspective of what your photo is taken at. And you should be able to paste them on top and make it look pretty convincing. All right. Oh, there's a hole right there. So I'm going to paint that back in, paint that back in. Blue balloon. All right, get the edges of this yellow balloon. If you have a crevice here, which is in between two intersecting you know, lines, you can't paint in there perfectly. It's a pain in the butt, especially because they curve inwards. Here's what you do. Just do a blob over the whole thing, which you would probably think, oh, no, I just ruined it. But now you go backwards. You paint back in the good areas, which is easier than painting out the bad areas. I use that all the time when I'm masking in between someone's legs or hair or where two things meet, like the you know, crevice of their arm or something like that. Okay, now let's zoom out. Let's look at our actual mask. So I'm going to alt click on the mask, and this is our mask. It looks pretty good. I see a few little spots that can be fixed with a little bit of easy painting around the edge. I'm going to click on the layer to go back into normal viewing mode. Here we're going to use that uh, straight line brush trick to paint back in these strings. So we're going to get a brush, click on our mask. I'm going to make my uh, brush pretty hard and make it a small brush size. Here I'm going to click where I see this string right here. I'm going to click on the top of it, right where it leaves the balloon, and I'm going to click down shift right there. And now I can see it's a little too thick, so I'm going to size my brush down a little bit. Got to have some good vision for this. <laughs> Mine is definitely not perfect. Okay, I wanted to click there. Now, something I learned about balloon strings is they don't all go down to one central spot. That's not how strings work, because guess what? They get all tangled up. They even curve a little bit. If you want to get exact, I'm not going to mess with the curve but these strings kind of group almost like tree branches where they'll collect at one point and then they'll branch off and uh, it, it, it all varies. So I, I at first I drew them all going back down to the center of the hand and it just something just looked wrong. Like my brain knew <laughs> that it wasn't right. So I'm going to speed this process up again and uh, save a little time and you'll kind of see how I'm drawing these branching strings. There we go. So I feel like every balloon here pretty much has a string of its own going down, which I painted using the shift. Again, you click on point A, hold shift, click on point B, and it draws a perfectly straight line. All right, so now we can actually take these balloons and start copying and pasting them. So how do we do that? I'm going to first get rid of this hue and saturation layer, which makes it look like they're on an Indian planet. I'm just gonna delete that. Remember, that was to help us with the masking, but we're done with that stage now. So I'm going to du duplicate the top layer, which is the couple. Right click and duplicate the top layer, which is them. I'm going to name this balloons. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with this top layer is I'm gonna right click and rasterize it because it is a smart layer or a smart object right now, which means now that it's rasterized, I can actually cut out of it and paste. So I'm gonna select with a square marquee selection, which is a letter M. I'm gonna grab just the balloons. And then I'm going to do selection inverse and then the delete key, which is going to delete everything outside of the square. Now, nothing changed visibly because we have duplicate layers underneath it. But now what we have is just this. We only have balloons and there's no background behind the balloons. Why? Because there's a mask here, which is this guy. And we still have a little bit of the girl's head in there. So I'm going to click on the mask and paint that out with black real quick right there. All right, now we have a layer of just balloons. Yay. Now we can move these balloons wherever we want. Look at this. We can duplicate them, we can you know, and make them bigger, smaller, whatever. So this is where the fun starts. So I told you a little bit of work up ahead of time and now we can just have fun with making a cool picture. So this is a duplicate layer. We have the original balloons, which is you know, on the layer of the couple, which right here, we're not gonna move those, but we are gonna move these around. 
So I'm going to uh, rotate this group and I'm going to move it over here. And I want to make sure that these strings collide as if they were entwined with each other. Like I said earlier, they kind of branch off like tree branches. So I'm rotating it and I'm moving it. Don't rotate it too much because balloons don't go straight out, right? They kind of arch upwards. So don't go too much of a slant. We can get away with a little bit of, of an angle. So there we go. If you don't see these control lines that allow you to rotate and scale, that's because your show transform controls is turned off on the top. That only shows up when you're using the move tool, which is the letter V. So V for move tool, make sure show controls is turned on. So I'm gonna duplicate these balloons again, which is control J or command J on Mac. And I'm gonna rotate this layer the opposite direction. Maybe move it down a little bit right there. I'm gonna duplicate it again. And I want these ones to be higher up, but I don't want it to be in front. I want these to be behind, which is not a problem because remember we have the couple on their own layer, which is so much, so much easier. So I'm just gonna drag it below the couple and boom, look at that, they popped into the, the background. And then maybe another group, control J again, rotate it a little bit less and over here, just to fill in that kind of hole, make sure the strings are kind of collide. Let me zoom into the strings you can see. They're all kind of going into each other. And um, I'm going to erase some of that little tie that was kind of coming off right there, make it a better blend. I'm gonna erase that and that. Awesome. Cool. Now look at that, we've got this big old group of, of balloons. It looks mostly believable. The strings are a little rough. And honestly, in my original, I, I, did a, I took a lot more time on my strings, I made it very, very small brushing and very more, much more exact. Um, actually, let me show the balloons. There we go. See, the strings look a little bit more natural. Now, the trick to making these look less of a copy and paste job is just change the hue. So I'm gonna click on this background balloon, which is up there in the back, and press Control U, which is the hue saturation, and just slide the hue a little bit. I'm gonna go to negative 36. Then click on the other background, which is over there, Control U, and maybe, plus 36 and click on the other ones, which is this one on the side, control U, just click over here. Try to keep it good, you know, elementary colors. Awesome, now I don't like that the balloons are going up above the, the frame there, which I think is these background ones, yeah, right there. So I'm gonna move those down a little bit. There we go, awesome. Okay, we've got uh, lots of balloons. Two more things to do to this photo, we're gonna enhance the colors and then erase these cars in the background. So some color grading tips, click on the background, go to adjustment layers and color balance. Now I'm gonna make the background bluer and the foreground warmer so I can get a good contrast. So select shadows in your color balance and uh, slide things towards the blue and the cyan, maybe the midtones towards purple. It's really up to, you know, your taste. Hopefully your, your monitor is accurate. You can actually see the colors right. There we go. So that's pretty dark, maybe a little too blue. But if you overdo it on an adjustment layer, the cool thing is you can just turn it down because you have opacity control. So I can put this adjustment layer at 50% or 60%, and it just kind of brings it back a little bit. Okay, now click on the couple, which is the top, uh, the foreground, adjustment layer, and make another color balance for them. But you need to click on this little button right here, which makes it a clipping layer, which means any adjustment done in this adjustment layer will only apply to the layer below it, which is what? Them layer right there with a the mask on it. Okay, so now this is great. Now we can warm them up a little bit. So highlights, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. Shadows, you may wanna add some blue in the shadows to give some contrast, because they are a little bit flat, but actually don't do that. We're gonna, we're gonna add a curves to fix that. So there we go, a little bit of a warming. Let me zoom in. Nice. All right, so before and after with them, and then let's make a curves on top of them. Make sure clipping layer is turned on. See that little arrow? That means it's affecting the layer below it. Now we can draw like a darkening. And we can enhance the darks. Make a little bit of a curve up that way so it's uh, more contrast. Yeah, much better. And let's add some contrast to the background because it's also kind of flat. So click on the background, adjustment layer, curves. Make an S curve. So drop the bottom end and raise the high end a little bit. Cool, so before and after without that, Oh yeah, that helps a lot. I like that a lot. Now let's get rid of these these cars in the background. I need to rasterize this bottom layer because you cannot use clone or healing on a, on a, on a smart layer. So right click on that and rasterize. 
Okay, so this is a pretty straightforward job. We're just gonna use the clone stamp tool and um, maybe half, um, make, it, make it pretty soft. So alt click on the edge of this tree and line it up and paint like so. You may have to let go and reset a few times, but if you do, you are gonna get this copy and paste look. So to offset some of the pattern, just kind of sample from some other areas and cover up. And there we go, we just broke up the pattern and now no one's gonna know, okay? Over here, we got some car pieces shining through. So I'm just gonna grab over here and I'm gonna do some little kind of spots over any of those highlights that are blue that I see. There we go, it's already looking way better. Cool. And then over here, I think this is my car. Just some quick little dots here and here, little lines, little slashes in between these branches. Mostly you just wanna target those highlights and those blue metal metallic areas. There we go. No one's gonna look and say, I think there's a van there. No, they're not. So that looks great. And I'm just not sure what this dark line is. It looks weird. So I'm gonna paint over that real quick. Grab from a different area. There we go. Gotta mix it up, break up the pattern. Okay, done. So the cars are gone. It looks great. Now, one last thing of realism. What do you think it is? What's missing in this photo? What's not right? The sky in the water reflection. There's no sky down here. So we're gonna grab uh, this sky layer, right click and duplicate it. I'm going to move it out of the um, sky replacement folder and I'm just gonna put it right above it, right on outside the folder, there we go. Now we can close the sky replacement folder. We've got this guy here, right click on the mask and delete it. So we just have this piece of sky, right? Now uh, we're going to go to edit, transform and flip uh, vertically. Because remember, water reflection is a mirror reflection. So line the image up roughly where the horizon is, and there we go. Now we need to mask it in into the water. So make so hide that sky layer. All right, once I've zoomed into this corner, I'm gonna press W for the quick selection uh, tool, which is, yeah, quick selection tool. And I'm just gonna paint over this water. One quick little drag, pretty much selected it, almost exactly. I'm gonna click on this little shore area. We don't want the rocks. And I think these are reflections or shadows. So we want those. There we go. Now I have my selection. I'm gonna press the letter Q, which puts us into quick mask mode, which is really cool because you can use the brush, which is B, to paint in or out your selection, to really just to fine tune it. So I'm gonna use a, a kind of soft brush to go along the shoreline. Really easy, a little imperfect, but you know what? For stuff like this, I think it's okay for a little bit of imperfection. Make sure to get out that rock if you wanna be exact. You can even put your brush at you know, different opacities, like 50% brushing to get a more subtle selection there. So when we're done with our quick masking, press Q again, and our selection is updated. Now we can click on our sky, which is here, and our selection is still there. See the marching ants? Which means if we click on the mask button, voila, we have the sky masked on top of the water. Um, let's bring back all the other layers. Do, 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 do the balloons. Okay, now it looks a little weird, that's okay. We can fade it to make it a little bit more believable. So let's press the number five, make it 50% transparent, and that looks pretty good. You can play with the opacity over here as well to bring it in or out. I feel like 50, 60 looks decent for that. And if you wanna get these shadows back in, you can click on the mask with a, a black soft brush. You can uh, you kind of paint them back in, maybe at 20% opacity, which gets a nice fade. Yeah, that looks, that looks nice. A lot more believable on the shadows and on these things too. Do, do. Paint, 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 paint. 20, 30% opacity is a nice, oops, nice soft amount to, to brush with. Cool. All right, that's it. One finishing touch you might wanna do is a uh, lookup table. So go to the very top layer, click on it, selection, adjustment layers, and color lookup. Now click on the load 3D LUT and click on two strip and just use your down arrow on your keyboard to scan through these different LUTs. So a LUT is basically, I have a whole video that covers what they are and how to make them, but it's a color lookup table, it changes all the colors in your photo to match the colors of a different edited photo. Um, and it's really easy and quick way to add a style or a film effect or a look to your photo. So um, let's go with this one. It's a bit intense, so we can dial this down to maybe 50%. Right there, it's a before and after. It just adds a little pop, a little color. I like it, and that looks awesome. 
Well, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something new from this video. If you did, I'd love to know, so comment down below. Let me know what you learned, and feel free to share this video on social media. Get the word out there. Help somebody else learn something new this week, and have fun editing. We'll see you next time.